What's up guys, I'm Shane and welcome to the off-season of the Relegation League. No one asked who you were! They know who you are! I think my brain just melted because of you. Can't stand you. What's up guys, I'm Shane and welcome back to the off-season of our Relegation League. You're not invited! You! You're not allowed! You're uninvited! On unintended slight. End of bull week here. Let's see who won the natty. Utah did it. Wow, that's how you can tell it's a video game. Now we didn't win any awards. I think Williams might have been finalist for best returner. And let's take a look at the All Americans. We had a couple, uh, but but not here. We we had them only in the MAC. Williams made second team All Conference. So did Fan and Agbana. And Kelly Powell. And uh, Williams is a returner. Let's see how the other bowl games go. Anything cool here? Uh, UCF over Texas. That's pretty neat. Kansas went down to Oregon. That's unfortunate. Georgia Southern got smashed. And uh, Alabama didn't do so hot. Okay. Now, as we always do, let's flip through and see who's getting promoted, who's getting relegated. So, promotion wise, Pitt, they're getting the protection. First year in the ACC, technically. And then down at the bottom was Army, but I do believe they were protected. So Navy is actually the one getting sent down to the American? Yeah, the American. Over in the coastal, Clemson's getting protected. East Carolina, they were not, so they're gone. And in the American, North Carolina, NC State, they're both coming back up. Big 12, it's Texas A&M getting the protection. And then, oh, poor Baylor. Poor Baylor down here. 0 and 9 in conference, 1 and 11 overall. Wow. Like, Rice finished better than them. And Texas State. Like, how. How? They weren't even the worst team. Like, they're better than Nebraska. The only team they beat was the FCS. That's it. That's their only victory. They even lost to ULM, who went 1 and 11. Over in the Red River, Oklahoma. They finished number two in the country. Maybe they should have been in the Natty, but they're going to get the protection. Down to the bottom, Louisiana Tech. They would be last place, but they are protected. So instead, it's the Raging Cages going back down to Conference USA. SMU and Texas, they're coming up. North Texas was so close. They've been in Conference USA this whole time. It was not our fault, though, because it goes by conference record. Big Ten, even though they finish on top, it's not Ohio State getting the protection. It's actually Western Kentucky. They were in the conference championship, so they will be protected. And getting relegated, it's Northern Illinois. Soon. Soon, guys. Over in the Legends, Indiana. I think they won the whole conference, so they're getting protected. Down at the bottom is Ohio. So our competition is going to get a lot easier. Because from the MAC, where we are, Cincinnati and Wisconsin, you guys knew that. So they're going back up. So uh, Purdue and Northwestern are going to be the only decent teams left in the conference. Over in the Pac-12, Oregon. I believe they won the whole conference, so they'll be protected next season. They're in-state rivals, not so lucky, they're gone. Over in the West, Utah just won the whole thing, so they're protected. And down at the bottom, Cal's going back down to the Mountain West, which is funny because they only got added back to the Pac-12 because I needed a filler team. And moving on up, UNLV, 68 overall. They're going up to the Pac-12, so undeserved. And Nevada, who we just beat, they're also going up. Fresno State with a better overall record, but just must have lost to Nevada. Maybe next time, guys. SEC Bayou, Alabama won the conference, so they'll get protected. Down at the bottom, Troy's gone. And now we're going to go over to the Glades, and it's my favorite thing. Because getting the protection, it's actually Miami. It was uh, basically deadlock, it looked like. But they technically won this division, so they'll get protected. And then down at the bottom, Florida State went 3-9, and 1-8 and eight in conference. They're going down to the Sun Belt. What a fall from grace for them. And moving on up, UCF. Yep, that, that's deserved. And then Georgia State will also be getting promoted. Memphis had a pretty good year. So did UAB, but just not enough. So those are the changes that will be made once I get to that point in the offseason. But now we're going to jump forward a week. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get into some recruiting. We're going to see which players are leaving and if anyone wants to transfer in. The only player leaving is Cato Nelson. He's the only senior on the roster. Well, okay then. 
By the way, both our coordinators stayed, but we also didn't get a contract extension. I was kind of hoping we would, but not so much. No one wants to transfer in. That's all right. I mean, I was kind of hoping for a linebacker, but it's whatever. Okay, so we're just going all in for Williams. Paul Rice, we don't need. Maybe we did enough just to sign him anyway. Same thing with Weber. I'm not really too interested in him, and if he comes in, he's just going to be a kick returner, I think. Because we, we honestly don't even need him. If he's a wide receiver, I think he's like probably our fifth string so i'm not gonna throw points at him he can just come here if he wants and then chris jack we've already got young tight ends anyways otherwise not really anyone else i'm in love with on this board and i saw the 74 overall wide receiver just floating around out there i wanted to add him to the board just to see if we would get on here but we didn't so if we had gotten on his board i would have offered him some points but that's fine we still have a top 25 class right now. We'll probably stay there no matter what. If we get Williams, we'll jump into the top 10, even without the other two recruits. But I don't really... Recruiting rank doesn't really matter too much because the team's going to be significantly better without signing anybody else anyways. But I'm still hoping. All right, Dan signed, and we got Weber anyways. The quarterback did not sign. That's unfortunate. He had... Oh, we got the 62 wide receiver. Okay, cool. You'll be cut. Um, it sucks because that Juco quarterback's actually pretty good. 89 throw power, 80 accuracy. That's not, not terrible. He'd be a game changer for certain programs. Top 25 class. We signed a top 10 prospect. So that's pretty good. All right. I thought signing Williams would be enough to jump us up, but I'm guessing the other schools also signed some good people. All right. So let's see. What did we get? Like, how far ahead were we on this guy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Might've, I might have been able to take a thousand points away from him giving to someone else. But at least Weber wanted to come in here. See, I'm wondering if I had given Williams the full 10,000 points if he would have come here. Because we only finished three grand back of Florida. But we weren't on his board, so I don't know if that would have taken. Either way, we got Williams. Really good halfback. And I guess this will lead into the next point that I'm going to bring up. So, this series has been running for almost as long as the channel has been going we have never once gotten to the five-year mark with umass we won a national championship in year four kansas and new mexico state were both year three and now here we are with akron we were one game away from getting promoted after year one with a 70 overall school still made a bowl game have this really awesome class i think it's about time that we take these sliders up now, for anyone who doesn't know, we don't use the J-Kit sliders on this dynasty because it's supposed to be a quick rebuild. I have been using the Operation Sports Forums. They have what I like to call the Sim sliders. Basically, it makes it fair. It's what I used in the very first episode of Black Rock. And when I switched to the J-Kit sliders, we went from beating Boise State, who was ranked in the top 25, to getting absolutely drubbed by everyone else we played. So, I think it's time the Relegation League moves up to the J-Kit sliders. That'll be starting next episode for season two. So because of that, we might actually go the full five years in this now. And if that's the case, Williams will be here because Williams Jr. will not be because he's a sophomore already redshirted. So at the very least, we'll have Williams for that last season or the 76 overall running back, either one. Plus having Williams as a backup, that's incredible. And Weber, like I said, I just don't think I need him because we have other people that came in. Ray Jackson, we definitely don't need. But again, the six foot seven wide receiver, you can't pass it up. Yeah, number 15 class. That's not terrible. And we're up to a two-star prestige now. Oh, I just realized we never looked at the season stats. There was nothing good. It was just mediocrity everywhere. All right, so this is what I mean. So we got Gerard Williams here, 81 overall. And he's going to be wide receiver. He'd be a good halfback for us, but he'll go wide receiver. He's only a sophomore. Todd Wynn is a freshman, also a wide receiver. So now Weber. Oh, I should check and see if any of these guys can play tight end. Actually, Weber was a 62. It's not bad. And Shelton actually goes up a point. He'll be a 76 overall quarterback. He will be our starter. Halfbacks are stacked, though, between Williams, Long, and then you got Williams Jr., yeah, Williams Jr. definitely, he'll be the Sean Gaddy Award winner. And even if he's not, that's, you know, he'll only not get it if he already gets a plus seven. So he will be the starter still. Williams will be a good backup. And Long, I'll make you catch a red shirt. I want to win within this five years, but I also want to set this team up for the future where I can. 
as you can tell by this ridiculously stacked wide receiver group. Because I kind of forgot about all the people I had redshirted. So we got Grimes down here with a 73 overall freshman coming off a redshirt. And uh, he's, uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Scipio might not make the team. All right, so offensive line. Xavier Gray was already here, so he'll get training results. So he'll be in the 80s overall at left tackle. We'll have Haas, the true freshman, playing the left guard. Copeland is the tackle I moved over to the center. He'll be a 78 overall. Look at, look at that improvement. Right there. There it is. For the right guard, we didn't bring in anyone new. So we got Daniels and Beckman, our two starting guards from last season. Whoever gets the better training results, like that'll just be who the starter is. And right tackle, we got Ramsauer. Like, look at the difference. He is so much faster than these other offensive linemen. All of these offensive linemen are slow as crap, actually. Except for Gray. Maybe I'll just stick with the 4-3. Maybe I won't go to the 5-2. Because Wilson will get some pretty decent training results. But I don't really have to... Because I got Fan. Bradford will be the starter here. And these two freshmen, and then maybe Wilson, if he gets some good training results, maybe he'll jump one of them. You know what? So what I'll do is I'll have Joseph here. Basically, the better of these two will be the second D-tackle. That'll have Morrow starring on this side. Or no, Bradford on this side. Fan will start on this side because look at the training results, and Morrow will be my swing defensive end. Because Richardson's coming back, which means Botang, who was our starter last year, will not be involved. So Richardson will be at the left. We'll still have Arslani in here at middle. And right outside linebacker will be Scott. And actually, I might even look at... Can this guy... He's terrible as an outside linebacker. Never mind. Secondary's in rough shape. I basically have to focus on linebackers and defensive backs. Because that's what we're going to need. But at least we'll have Harris here at strong safety. And I will slide Kelly Powell over, so he'll be our free safety now. Now I just need some good training results, please. So Gibson got a plus four, 83 overall. He got some bumps during the season. DJ Iron, so technically Shelton would be our third stringer, but he's so much faster than these guys, he's, he's gonna be the starter. Halfback, Williams only a plus four, so he'll get another three for the Deshaun Gaddy Award. And again, if you missed it during Casper College, now, from now on, whoever wins the Deshaun Gaddy Award will be converted to number 17. They're gonna get the number change. This way you'll see it during the season so you can remember who actually won it. I don't know if anyone has 17 right now, but they're about to lose it. I don't have a fullback on the roster. That's not a good sign. So Williams got a plus four. Qual's a plus five. Matheson is a plus four. He didn't even play. Grimes didn't play. Only got a plus three. Yeah, so he's... I thought we were going to have to build around him. And uh, he's... Yeah. Yeah, so we got the, <laughs> the Juco, the sophomore 81 overall wide receiver, who was already at least our slot. Hey, but Scipio at least got the plus four. Ugnetovich with a plus six. I thought he was just like going to keep the seat warm until Brank came in here, but now Brank can just be our second tight end for a little bit. He's only a freshman still. Okay. Ugnet I mean, he deserved that. He was great for us. Gray only gets a plus three. That's, that's upsetting. Allen got a plus seven on a red shirt. That's how bad the centers were last year. Well, at least we'll have a good backup. Daniel's a plus five. Beckman got a plus three. He was awful. He was awful. He started off better than Daniel's, and now he's going to be the backup. Murphy only got a plus three. Yeah, these offensive linemen were bad. Fan got a plus four. All right. Lawson, a plus four. Good, good results. Morton got a plus five. Plus six for Wilson. Plus five for Cy. Now I'm glad I put that defensive end back because this guy is going to be better, and we'll have a few years with him. All right, we got a loaded D-line now. Richardson a plus six on his red shirt. Botang played and only got a plus four. So yeah, power of the red shirt right there. Artis landing a plus four, 89 overall. If he gets one more awareness boost, I think that's it for him. Okay, linebacker. Middle linebacker is looking pretty good, actually. Scott only gets a plus three. Delaro got a plus five. Yeah, if we don't get any good linebackers this year, we're going to have to go to a 5-2 next year. Yeah, Watts that plus 5 up to an 88. Cochran got a plus 5 on a red shirt up to an 83. So Igbana a plus 5. Hooks a plus 5. Amonkwa only got a plus 4. He had a real good year for us. But now he's going to be our fifth cornerback, so I guess it makes sense. Kelly Powell a plus 6. 
Switch position, still got really good training results. And then, yeah, you know, safety, death behind him. There's no one really young. Like, this guy's a redshirted sophomore. I'd prefer to have a freshman, but at least there's something there. This is, you know, in case of emergency. Thomas got a plus six to a 77, and he'll still be behind the Juco. Kicker a plus four, punter a plus four. Cool. All right, the fact that we only had one senior means that we're probably going to have to cut a few people here. we got to cut 18 players. All right, well, we can get rid of irons. I'm trying to clear up room on a depth chart. And this 62 overall quarterback can get cut, too. Bryant went from our backup last year to cut. Goodbye. All right, Jackson, you just... Cool. I, I don't know. what am, I, I don't need a six foot seven wide receiver, apparently. I'm just going to cut all of these guys down here. Actually, I guess Gavings. He can probably stay. Sorry, Blunt. You had a couple plays. Name, you dropped too many passes. I got to let you go. Gary, you're another starter from last year, but there's just not room on the roster for you. All right, cuts are made. Let me go mess around with the conferences, take care of a couple other things, and I'll meet up with you in a second. All right, so we're here in the preseason. I've already taken care of a lot of this stuff. So let's go through it real quick. Anthony Williams got his number 17. He got his Deshaun Gaddy Award, so the plus seven. So his training results were bumped up by three points. 89 speed, 95 agility, 97 excel. So now he's as fast as Williams, but with way better acceleration and agility. Now, Williams is actually... I'm going to try something a little different than I usually do. He's going to be my kick returner. He might not be the best option, but I want to get him involved somehow. And I've never really tried a power back back there. I always try and go over just for the speedsters. So we're going to try it and see if it works. And again, quarterback Kyle Shelton will be our starter. He is not draft eligible. I might bump him up after we're done. I don't want him drafted for us, but for the computer, I might bump him up, make him six foot one, and like 210. That'll be enough to get him drafted. We did redshirt long. If he transfers, he transfers. But we, we're not probably going to use him too much and in wide receivers i just had to redshirt some people so if you go one two three four five six grimes wouldn't even be seeing the field so i redshirted weber because again he was a sort of a bonus and wins a true freshman so he'll catch a red shirt williams will be my man out of the slot hopefully he gets a lot of passes this year uh and scipio i mean i i just couldn't bring myself to cut him i should have he's our number six receiver but really it should be gay things but I just like Scipio too much. And the only other player to catch a red shirt that's really important is Morrow here. Because Lawson's a 75. We're only losing one point. Might as well give him a year. Yeah, otherwise it's lower end people. Like the 64 overall D-tackle. Just so we don't have to stress about filling in the roster positions and at least have people there. Schedule, nothing too crazy. So I left myself the first two bye weeks here. Because it might be like three weeks before I record the next episode. Because you guys are seeing this so far in advance. And I've got at UNLV for week three. So we'll have the recruiting board all set up next episode. We'll be in the low lock. Like, it'll all be nice and pretty for you guys. Home for Louisville. Then the bye week. Home for Cincinnati. We went and saw their atrocious Bearcat. They can come see our kangaroo. At Charlotte, because I've never actually seen this team in action. And then the generated schedule for the conference is weird. So home for Northern Illinois. Home for Western Michigan. Home for Eastern Michigan. Home for Ohio. And then at Northwestern, at Purdue, at Kent State, at Bowling Green. So that is just weird that we've got that long of a road stretch, which means I better get my recruiting done quick because after week 11, we can't get another visit. They all have to be in by week 11. Not even a bye week down here to play with. I did reset my skill tree so we can still scatter 100%. Two points in the royal treatment. We maxed out the opener so I can just go after more prospects at the beginning. The closer, I only put one point here, and depending on how the season goes, will depend on where I put the rest of my points, assuming I get one or two more during the season. And otherwise, that's it. That'll wrap up this episode. Oh, wait, you know what? All right, so in one off season, we jumped up to an 81 overall team. Offense up to a 79, defense up to an 85. Usually, when I do these rebuilds, uh, it goes the other way around. We are projected to finish third in the conference, though. Purdue's a little bit better. Northwestern's about the same. Uh, everyone else... Ooh, Northern Illinois jumped up like 10 points in the offseason. That's good for them. Kent State's projected ahead of us, though. I think we'll be able to handle them. So, optimistic for this season. Again, with the new sliders, it might be a little more difficult. But, I mean, those J-Kid sliders, I've worked with them before. They're not going to completely break me, I don't think. But maybe we won't run the table this year. 
If I left him on the old siders, we probably could have gone like 10 and 2 at like worst case scenario. This year, we're going to hope we get promoted. But if not, we got a bright future. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit like down below. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell to get it delivered directly to your inbox every single time I upload. Any thoughts, suggestions, whatever you may have, leave all that down in the comment section below. Everything you leave down there, I will always respond to unless you are the trolliest of trolls. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Shane. I'm out.